My name is uh, Paul Kwasa, and actually uh, Agulak is my uh, name that was given to me when I was born. My name is Gabriela Gámez. I work for Suma TV. Well, I was born in an igloo, and uh, that was when we were still nomadic kind of life, where we were not living in communities, the communities that we now live in. So we used to travel from one place to another just to survive, to hunt, and that's what we lived in. Before uh, 1960s, when we were moved to a community. For them, it was really kind of ironic how technology came uh, on the 21st century along with, their, what, with what they have been doing for centuries. And um, they are they're very they are very into technology and mechanics and uh, they really have this understanding of technology since long time ago. Our government came in and said, you, you now can have television. But the people of Iglulik said, no, not right now. Because uh, the programs that were available at that time didn't have any Inuktitut -in language at all. And the community of Iglulik said, not until such time there is ineptitude on television will we accept it. And four years later, uh, Inuit Broadcasting Corporation was created and ineptitude was being spoken. And that's when our community said, yes, we'll take it now. The tools of the 21st century now allow them to do certain things that they have been doing forever. We found out that we could use that media in uh, introducing Inuit culture, the language, to the rest of the world. And I think with Isuma Productions uh, that did the work that we were looking at. That's what we were visioning. Isuma TV is a project that Iglulik Isuma Productions did. We started on 2007. Iglulik Isuma Productions that's what it did. It showed the rest of the world how Inuit lived. It showed the rest of the world our language. So it's basically a window to indigenous reality. And that gave us a, a stepping stone in preserving and teaching it to our young people. Inuits and Norman Cohen, they had very clear guidance of certain things. One of the most important things for them was to, made, to make a website that was rather visually based than text based. Because, um, as you know, indigenous people are more an oral tradition and a visual tradition than, I mean, they are based in oral and visual. They're not text based. And we wanted to create a space that was that. For example, if I'm reading in a book how to build an igloo, I mean, I can, I can write about it and write about it how to build an igloo. And if I just read about it, go out on the land, there's no way I can build it. It's made by them, it's made by the Inuit people, for the Inuit people and for the rest of the indigenous uh, people. So they know what indigenous people need. They, it's, um, they really had these clear guidance of certain things that for them are very important and it's really funny how those things that are important for Inuit people are also important for the rest of the indigenous people around the world. The name Isuma, Isuma, I mean, I'm thinking, I'm going to make that thought come out visually and that's what Isuma means, how to take a thought and put it out and see it rather than writing it. It's made by them, it's made by the Inuit people, for the Inuit people and for the rest of the indigenous uh, people. So they know what indigenous people need. They, it's, um, they really had these clear guidance of certain things that for them are very important. And it's really funny how those things that are important for Inuit people are also important for the rest of the indigenous people around the world. It's a tool that you can use in so many different ways. You can use it politically, you can promote your culture, you can promote your language, you can 
promote your values. So I think it's a means of a communication system where you can use it in so many different ways and, and it can change the lives of people. That was a whole task, it was a challenge. We achieved part of it when we launched it in uh, early 2008. And right now after one year and short, uh, a, a short team, we, we were able to do this next platform that we're gonna be able to launch in about 20 days. Scientific knowledge is, is mostly all written, whereby traditional knowledge is knowing it by seeing it. So, and we always say, scientific knowledge and traditional knowledge have to work together to get a good uh, end result. And, and that's what we believe in. Our um, big challenge is not the equipment, which is pretty accessible right now and pretty, yeah, pretty accessible economically speaking and uh, accessible as it is. Um, our big concern specifically in the Arctic is uh, broadband and getting high speed is very difficult there and uh, what we're trying to do right now is talk to the Canadian government and talk to the Nunavut government and talk to other organizations that could help um, improve the situation of broadband there. Um, people in the north are 300 times behind in high speed as Montreal and they pay a lot more uh, and we are trying to get that um, into a better situation. When I became uh, a young man, uh, like 20s, we started uh, saying, look, we can speak our language. Our language has to be spoken in educational system. And I think that's how we started this whole process of saying, we have a right to speak our own language. We have a right to preserve our culture. And I think that that is something that we are so proud of that uh, you know, here's a community that said no to television right at the beginning, and yet they are the first ones who were able to make major movies, uh, such as Atanarjot or Journal of Knut Rasmussen, and it was all done in Inuktitut. And that tells me that Igluluk is very strong in wanting to preserve the language and the culture and and new media such as this helps us.